Hello there essential stencilers. How are you this morning? Well this evening for you guys in America. Um, I'm Sharon from the blog I Restore Stuff right here in Australia and um, I'm here today with another DIY project and today we're going to be working on a table runner and I'm going to show you how you can stencil on fabric. It's not just fabric it's I've made it out of a coffee sack, an old coffee sack. Uh, but if you're here joining in, let me know where you're tuning in from. And hey, while you're there in the comments, if you see someone else from your state or your country, why don't you tap the little reply button and, and tell them hello and that you're from the same area. A lot of people have great conversations on our lives in the comments. So this is where it's all at. Um, hi, Sharon. How are you? I can see some comments rolling in there. If you're watching the replay, of course, comment the word replay and we will be giving away a replay winner prize as well as three lucky winners at the end of our live here this morning. And um, we love it when you sprinkle the love and share the love on our DIY projects also. I'm just pulling up my live here on the Facebook page on my laptop so I can see a lot more comments than I can in the actual phone up here that I'm recording on. So how are you today? Betty's watching. Um, California we've got. Thank you Deborah for sprinkling. So if you do hit that little share button we love that. Just share it to a group that you're, you're an um, admin in or um, share it to your own page. If you know a DIY you can tag them in the comments there too or share it with them. You hit the share and I think it goes to their messenger button. So thank you for sprinkling Deborah. Um, let me see. I'm thinking that I can see the comments here. Trying my best. From Woodridge, Illinois. Joyce, hi. Anita's here from Canada. Well, hello, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to be working on uh, using the vertical stencils today. So, I'm because I'm doing a, a table runner, I thought I'd do the uh, video this way. So, hopefully, that's okay with Facebook because sometimes they like you to do it portrait, but doing it vertical today so I can kind of bring you down to my um, project when we're working on it and you can see a lot better and a lot more clearly. Thank you so much for sprinkling. I'm still not seeing all the comments here properly on my live so let me just see what's going on with that. I might be seeing them more on the phone today. Facebook's messing with me. All right so I'll, I'll show you my cloth. Actually I'll just lift it up because I can do that too. I was so hoping that I would get in the mail this week that I would receive my Stencil of the Month Club order because guess what? I designed this month's Stencil of the Month, the June one. So if you haven't seen that yet, go to stencilofthemonthclub.com and you'll be able to see my design and it's all grandparent themed. It's such a fun, cute design. Um, I'm expecting it any day now. So maybe if I do receive it before my next live next week, I might do a spontaneous live somewhere on my page or, or here on Essential Stencil. But I can't wait to show you that. And let me know in the comments if you've already received your Stencil of the Month um, stencil, guys, uh, for the June. So hi, guys. Hi from Missouri, Minnesota. All the M, M states represent today. Okay, here's my coffee sack so it was just a and sometimes these coffee sacks have words on them I can't remember if this one had words or not but it, it was probably a bit longer I cut off the top and I've just hemmed the edges and made it into a table runner it's got this cool green stripe down the middle of it it was there already and I thought it would be a great table runner for you know outdoor picnic table barbecue table something like that you could even do it indoors but it's got a, it lends to a real farmhousey kind of theme so I'm going to do a vertical stencil on that today and I tossed over whether you know you could do this so many different ways there's so many different ideas for the vertical stencils I've got let me just show you I've got this piece of paper roll and it was the end of a roll so I've only got to here so you'll have to remind me when I stencil down to about there, I'll need to um, shift the paper down lest I have paint coming through onto my table. Um, Donna says, I love that sage green color. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's a little bit darker than sage, but maybe on the video it might be coming up 
stage, yeah, that's cool. All right, so the, the vertical sign that I'm going to be using today is the one called Welcome to Our Farmhouse. And that's it there. It's, the four, it's a four foot sign, so it would fit something that is a four foot board. I'm assuming that's what that means. Uh, it even gives you the measurements for each of the little stencils inside. So it's got two nine by 17 inch, and that would be the, um, the letters that have two letters on them. So that would be these longer ones. So that spells out the word farm. And then it's got the other stencils and it shows all those measurements on the front there. Okay, so this one has, you've, you can see that, and let me just turn it around this way. Maybe I'll put it on the black so you can see. So it has the letters to spell out the word farm. And then it has the welcome to our, and then farm and then house. You could even just leave the house off and say welcome to our farm. Say you had a, had a farm. Uh, someone's saying their screen stopped. I see it's still going. Carol says she's got the, oh, did I miss that? I thought I said Carol said she had the, um, saw that Carol has the grandparent stencils. I'm so excited for you. I can't wait to get mine in the, in the mail. And it has these cute little um, things here too. Now we could use the, uh, as they've done in the, in the example here, you can use the windmill for the A if you wanted to. So we might do that today. Use the windmill for the A and pop that up here. Now the other idea, you could use this not just for a table runner, but you could use it to hang for a banner. Uh, also, you know, you could put a, a bar up near the end up here and then let it hang down and put it on the front porch instead of a front porch sign. <clears throat> yeah, burlap, that's the word I'm looking for. So I can see some comments flying through, but I'm, if I miss your comments, I'm so sorry. I will jump through at the end of the live and, um, and go and answer any questions that you might have. All right, so in the latest release of uh, stencils, you'll see the 4th July kind of patriotic stencils. There are a couple of vertical signs in here that would also work great for a 4th of July picnic table, I'm thinking. So doing something along those lines using God bless the USA, this one right here. Let me show you that example. So if you use my code, I restore stuff at essentialstencil.com, you'll receive 10% off. There is this one that's uh, Land of the Free, Home of the Brave. That's another vertical stencil. And again, you can use these. Um, this one's a bit smaller. It's a five foot sign. Actually, that's a four foot sign. This is a five foot, but the letters are smaller just to be able to fit all of those words on them. If that makes sense. You can also use these going across ways if you wanted to. You could just, you know, use your letters to go across your uh, burlap like that. So I thought about whether I would do that and just kind of go you know, make my farm, you could, you could do this, welcome to our, you could even put that up here and do F, then you can put your A and then R, M and then house down here. So you could do something like that for a table runner, but I think I like the vertical idea. So let's go ahead and start on that and we'll have a little chat about stenciling, about stenciling on burlap, answer any questions you might have. Then I've got another fun little idea for these little stencils as well using uh, those combined with this sweet um, little farm life six pack. So that's got some great ideas here. So I've got a sign board. So stay tuned for that. We'll just add the, tack that little project onto the end of our live here. It'll be fun. So stay tuned because the surprise is at the end always. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to use the black mineral paint today and being very careful not to get it on the, uh, the table runner that I've got here. I've shaken my mineral paint up. I'll put that on the table over there. Using one of our stencil brushes, here's all of them. The, the four different sizes in the Essential Stencil brush range. I don't know if you can see that there. Now they're included in, in the 10% off if you use my code, I restore stuff. Never can have too many brushes. Now I'm going to be using the larger one today because we have such large areas to cover. 
and I am thankful for this stripe because I'm hopefully I hope that that's the center it kind of looks centered if you put it on there so what I didn't get was some offloading paper so that's what I'm going to have to do with my paper that I've put here underneath I'm gonna to have to tear off a bit and use it as my offloading paper because when we're stenciling we want a really dry brush it's curling up for me so the best thing to do is either a cardboard um, plate or something like that to use for that so I'm just gonna to have to move my paper down as I go and we'll start off just by spacing out our letters and I was going to use the windmill for the A so I'll try not to forget that all right so we are going to be gifting three stencil sets plus a fourth set if we reach 250 live viewers today folks so share away I think I might just actually do that really quickly let me see if I can do that on my um, my laptop here but if you wouldn't mind just hitting that share button and seeing if there's some friends or uh, followers that you might want to share that with if you have a page a DIY page you can um, share it there I'm going to be sharing that to my group I've got a blog called I restore stuff and my Facebook group is I restore stuff you can too so I teach people how to upcycle and um, paint furniture and other fun DIY projects so what we're doing here is dabbing a bit of paint onto our brush you can dip it into the actual pot if you wanted to and then I just wipe off the edge like so trying not to flick it everywhere and I work the paint into the bristles so there's a bonus bonus fourth set guys so thank you so much yeah join in the comments guys Tony says I haven't been on for a while can't wait to see your project tonight woohoo okay we've got our farm pretty well set out don't want to go too close to the edges now I've got our actual um, really old farmhouse I don't know if you can see any of the wood on my actual table here but it's very very old and I've actually got a blog post about this let me just move my thing down so you can actually see what I'm stenciling I like to start at the top and it's out of shot right now okay the table that I'm actually stenciling on well not on the table but I'm stenciling the table runner on a really really old dining room table which was built by let's see my grandmother's father so that would be my great grandfather and he built it for their family right here in Queensland he was and I found out that he was actually a furniture maker like a carpenter but he specialized in building furniture so I was super excited to find that out and this table it's been in my family for years my mum and dad had it at their place I remember um, as a young adult uh, my grandparents gave this to my mum and dad and they we uh, did it up and made it over at my parents place one day adding some you know we stripped it back and did some varnish on it and while we were while we varnished it and it all looked great that you know that was like about 20 years ago and so you know how the varnish sometimes on old wood it goes kind of orangey so it was kind of looking old and orangey so I revamped it and I actually restained the top and I painted the base black to where it's like a real farmhouse style look so I don't know if you can see much of that wood there but it's sort of like a dark chocolatey stain but it's got all the you know these grooves in it it's got nail holes it's got screws in the end to tie it all together um, but I, I was just keen to just do something with the table and keep it in the family so I'll be excited to see this table runner on it I'll have to take some pictures so there's welcome to our and we've got the letter F here now you can use some painters tape if you like yeah Tony said that's awesome to find something that was in the family yeah Oops. my comments are jumping all over the place so it's a bit tricky today to try and follow them just making sure I've got this lined up correctly now the letters I believe are all sort of spaced out 
so that this space here, when you join these two letters together here, you've got the same sort of spacing, okay? So that's why if you have them lined up correctly, it should be all evenly spaced down your vertical porch board or wherever. Oh, I think that's a little bit off center. Do you? Oh, no, the A is correct. The A is almost centered. Maybe just a fraction over. It's hard because the F is kind of that way. Yeah, I think we've got it. So yes. Abby says, if you don't have the ES brushes, you have to get them to make project projects so much easier. They do. Whoop, I've got a hair on there. All right, so just up, loading my brush up again. Someone said, yeah, I'd have to tape down all my stencils. Yeah, it's good if you can tape them down, it does stop it, especially if you're working on uh, this burlap, you know, this coffee sack material. It's quite a coarse grain. And so I've got, I didn't offload a whole lot of paint. I've left a bit on there because we're working with such big areas and spaces. Whereas if you had a smaller, um, in fact, I'll get a bit more on my brush. And I don't want to offload too much because of all the fabric that we have to go with. So when I'm working with larger spaces like this, hoping that you can see that well enough, I work in the center where most of the paint will come off and sort of pushing in from the edges, if that makes sense. And you can sort of wriggle it around to make sure that, and then I'm gonna go like this. Now we often get the question here on our lives when we're stenciling fabric pieces, how washable it is. Now, if you're working on, hi Rosa, she said she's late, but you're here. Yes, that's awesome. It is a big project. Uh, we're gonna have fun with this today, it, but you watch how quick and easy it really is. We've got this much done already. And we were just talking about how uh, washable it is. If you use an acrylic paint, um, and I was going to use the windmill for the A. If you use an acrylic paint, all you have to do is heat set it. So that means if you've got fabric and you toss it in the dryer, a hot dryer for 15 minutes or so, it'll set it. Now I think the windmill might have to come down a fraction. I might actually leave that windmill until I've got my R on, and the reason being but I want to just make sure it's all in the right place because the windmill is a slightly taller than the A. So I want to center that to these two letters. So once I've got this R on, so there's a hint for you. So the other idea, sorry, was talking about how to heat set your fabric. Uh, you can just use a dry iron also. So take the steam off the iron, the steam setting, turn that off and just use a hot well, as hot as the fabric that you're painting on can stand, you know, so if it's cotton, you can put it on the cotton setting, but just use a dry iron. Uh, Linda says it's fun to stencil on burlap. It is. Lots of fun. So I was talking about this farmhouse table that um, I'm leaning on here and doing my projects on. It's our dining room table now and a family heirloom now. So I've got a blog post all about that dining room table and how I painted it over and how I made it over. And you can see that on my blog at irestorestuff.com. And um, just look at one of my latest blog posts. It's not too far down the latest blog post trail, but if you go to the search bar and look up farmhouse table, I've actually done a lot of black farmhouse tables, but you'll see this one, family heirloom one. So yeah, I was so excited actually. Um, I think because my dad is one of 10 children, so when my grandparents had it, um, you know, after my grandma had it when she was a little girl because her dad built it, and then when grandma and grandpa had their 10 kids, they, they obviously couldn't fit around this. This would probably fit comfortably one, two, three, four, five, six people. So um, it obviously needed <laughs> a lot more space and so grandpa drilled some holes in either end and created these leaves to the table that would extend the table so their 10 kids could fit around 
So that would be 10 kids plus mum and dad. So there's 12, 12 people seated around this table. I think it would still, in this day and age, it would still, I would still find that a bit squishy on this table. It's crazy. Yes, thanks, Barbara. Yeah, I love antiques that are handed down in the family too. Okay, I think that I'm down to, I've got to watch where my paper's going. I've got to move my paper down because I'm actually not protected at the back there. So I've got some paper underneath here. Um, does it bleed through to the item that you're using, like the table you use? Terry just asked that question. So yeah, I, as I saw that, I thought, oh, my paper probably hasn't shifted down underneath. You could put paper or cardboard, something like that. So see, it really doesn't take that long. And like I said before, just depending on what you're stenciling is to how much you would load your brush or offload the paint that's on it. But I usually recommend just go with less and then if you find you need more, just put a little bit more paint on the next time. So I'm just going to go over that again. And so with this cloth, I'll probably just heat set it by giving it a good um, iron on a fairly hot setting. Dry iron with no steam. Okay, so now that we've got the letter R there, we can we can go on with the M. I'm just making sure, I've got to make sure all these things, I've got to make sure you can see the M in the camera shot. So I'm looking there, I'm looking at comments to see if I can see any comments. Don't forget there's a bonus prize today if we get more than 250 people watching. We get a fourth bonus prize at the end of the live today. Now this uh, stencil set comes with two cute other pictures that didn't quite fit on my table runner but they would fit on a porch board and I'm just going to put them here. One is the windmill that we're going to use for the A and the other is this little farm truck kind of thing. But I want to show you in a minute how you can use those to combine with some other sets to create a fun sign. A little farmhouse sign for your house. Um, Tina said, where did you get your burlap? This would look great on your dining room table. You can get burlap from a, a whole bunch of different places, but I actually got this from um, an, a real life coffee sack. I don't know about over there, but in Australia, coffee is pretty big here at the moment. So coffee, coffee companies uh, will often have these from their raw beans, coffee beans, have these huge coffee sacks that they sell And um, I got mine from that. I got a bunch of them actually and made them into all sorts of different things. I, um, I, if you look on my blog at irisstorestuff.com, you'll see some of the things. If you do the search bar and search coffee sack or grain sack, I've actually made these coffee sacks into furniture pieces, like a little footstools, added them to um, yeah, all sorts of things cushions made some cushions out of some big floor cushions actually out of coffee sacks one time literally just put a put a big cushion inside a coffee sack and stitched it over to close it up and you're done so great for floor cushions Teresa said she just bought some long burlap at a yard sale last week yeah some great ideas you can stencil burlap you know, you can make bunting. You could even use some of the great 4th of July or patriotic stencils that Essential Stencil has and do some bunting. Okay, so I've got the main letters there. I'll take this off now, the F, and just replace the A with a windmill. Just pop that over here. I'm going to have to Soak that in water. I'm not near my kitchen sink today. So I want to just go sort of between the R and the F and make sure that it's around about centered. Okay, so there we go. Oops. My computer screen keeps closing down so I miss out. <laughs> I've got to open it up again, refresh it. Oop. There we go. Okay, Vicky says, just made this on a porch leaner today. 
Never thought out of the box. Thank you for your new idea. You are so welcome. I love doing new ideas, especially uh, with essential stencils and just using them for all different things. Love to mix and match the stencils. There's so much you can do. Don't forget to use my code, I restore stuff, or any of the links that are right here in the description of the live or in the pinned post, Essential Stencil will put the, the uh, stencil links for the stencils that I'm using today, but absolutely any of the things I'm using today, even the, the stencil brushes, in fact, even the wooden tags that Essential Stencil have, they have plenty of those in stock and they are such a great idea for table decor using those little mini tags. I was trying to see if I had one over there on my buffet, but I don't have one there right now. The mini tags are great for little decor ideas and they fit perfectly the mini stencils that Essential Stencil stocks on their site. So just use my code iRestoreStuff and get your 10% off. Who's brand new to stenciling, has never stenciled before? I would love to hear that. Um, I haven't been able to catch up with all the comments, but is there anyone who's new to stenciling and has never stenciled before, or you're just new to essential stencil and haven't tried their stencils yet? I'd love to hear from you in the comments, let me know. Hi, was that Dina or Diana from Texas? Woohoo. Okay, so there we've got our letter A, but it's actually a windmill. It's a cute idea. And we've got our R and our M. I just need to pop the word house down here. And as I said before, let me see if we've got that in the full shot. I'll just have to drag my paper down here again. Hopefully that didn't go through to the... The burlap's quite thick, so I don't think it would have gone through to the table even if I had just not had paper underneath there. But yeah, just pop a piece of... Um, who was that Marie said? No, missed it, missed the comment. <laughs> it's funny, I try to catch them and then they disappear with other comments coming in. All right, so there's that. And you can just leave it say, welcome to our farm, but I'm gonna pop the word house at the end there. for you. And on burlap it's really quite quick if I just leave a little bit more paint on the brush and you don't get all that bleed through that you might get with a sign. And then after this I'm just going to show you a really super quick project that you can use using the um, so a lot of these vertical stencils have these extra little icons and uh, like the windmill and this one also has the little truck. So there's lots of those kinds of icons that you don't want to miss when you're opening up your packet of your vertical stencils. Think how can I use those little extra icons for other stencil ideas. So I'm going to show you one of those in just a minute. And let's just find that over here. First of all, I'll just hold that up to show you. Now, let's see, what will I use for this one? I've got this board right here. I think I'll use some white for that one. And um, pop this in a wet cloth in case I want to stencil later. I'll just pop that in a wet cloth so that it doesn't dry out my brush. And I'll grab another one of my brushes for this project. We're making a table runner. If you've just joined us, thanks for sharing the live. And um, just got one more project to do after this, but here's our table runner so far. Well, let me see if I can fit it all in now. Let's see if I move it this way. So we've got welcome to our farmhouse. And I'll show you that at the end. I'll hold it right up. But for right now, I'm going to show you just this little block of wood. Look, it's just a random rustic block of wood. I've painted blue, distressed the edges to give it a bit of an old farmhousey look. And I wanted to show you how you can use some of these, like this and the windmill. Let's see, what did I have here before? I had the, um, 
Where are they? The patriotic vertical signs. Now they come with a few things. Well, they've got land of the free, home of the brave. Look, the um, God bless the USA one has these little stars on it. So think of other ways that you could use these stripes and these stars to create other things, you know, for a, a patriotic type stencil. You could have this just as a border for something. Imagine this as a border for some of your draw sets. So just think a little bit outside of the box when you grab your stencil packs. There's just so many fun things that you can mix and match. They don't have to be exactly like you see them on the description on the front. So I'm just going to do a quick easy stencil here and I'm using the six pack stencil set called Farm Life and I've seen that they've, they're in stock at the moment. Great set to have because there's so many fun farmhouse designs. These are the other six, these are the other five. So I've showed you that one. There's Home Sweet Home, no Farm Sweet Farm, sorry. That's the one I'm going to use today but I just want to show you these. Farm Life, we've got the Rooster, We've got the cow and the animals and then another tiny windmill, which is really cute. Sitting beside this one, it's about mm, three quarters of the size of that one that we used for the A. And then we've got home right there. So you could use that on this one. You could use home and then the truck, but I'm just going to do farm, sweet farm. And we'll use just some fusion mineral paint. Sue Ann says she's using a an essential stencil right now. That's great. I love it. Um, okay, folding up my paper there so I can use that to offload. I'm just going to use the three quarter brush. Let me see if I can move that slightly this way. Let me move it down a bit so we can see better. So using the truck from the vertical stencil set and that was called, it, the link is right there in the description of the live. It's called the Welcome to Our Farmhouse Vertical Stencil Set. I've made a table runner. Now we're going to make a cute farmhousey sign to go with that. And I can pretty much uh, center that. I might have to just remove that. Bit. Do that a bit later. Just going to reuse some of this tape that's just right here. And <clears throat> oops, looks like I've got to dig down into the bottom of the jar to get this paint out. Just being really super careful not to get it all over my table. So um, the brown is a burlap sack. So it's not a paper sack. Someone mentioned that. Yeah, the truck is really cute. So yes, there's a couple of people saying they've just joined in late. So we've just done a table runner. And now I'm using the Farm Life six pack mini set. So if you want to get that, use my code iRestoreStuff and the link is right there in the description of the live or you can just go to their site and look it up and use my code iRestoreStuff and get your 10% off today. But don't go anywhere because there's prizes at the end of our live and we've almost reached 250 guys. If we get to 250 viewers, there'll be a bonus prize. Somebody let me know when we've done that. Let me know if we reach 250 because um, just by you guys sharing and sprinkling the love, we can get some more viewers and there'll be a bonus prize winner. Could be you. You guys are amazing. I love uh, the conversation that goes on in our comments. <clears throat> um, where did I get the burlap fabric? Uh, it's actually a coffee sack. So I just got a bunch of coffee sacks from... I don't know, some kind of, I think it may even have been someone giving them away. But you can get burlap from a bunch of different places, from your local craft stores, I believe you can get it on the roll. This is probably actually a lot thicker than the burlap that you would buy on the roll. I'm imagining it's really sturdy and quite thick. In fact, I hemmed the edges so the coffee sacks are usually like tied together with some kind of really thick string. So I just cut off the edges and then I <coughs> hemmed the edges. Okay, and just popping our truck right in here. Super quick, easy signs, aren't they? <laughs> All right, so just, I think we just need one more little dip for this truck. Oops, and now I did what I didn't want to do is splatter it all over my nice family heirloom table that I was just talking about. 
I've got to get that off straight away. Ooh. Sometimes when I am rubbing the brush, you know, when you're wiping the brush off the edge of the uh, pot, it splatters. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So what I'm stenciling on now is just a wood board and uh, just came from, you know, it's a bit of recycled timber actually from an old piece of furniture, TV cabinet that was broken. <clears throat> now, if you've watched any of our lives before, we usually go through um, our tips for just removing most of the paint off your brush and just using a dryish brush and just doing some swirling motions. But let me just bring the truck stencil up to you. See all those really fine lines in here? Those little bridges with the fine lines it's really important to be very gentle with that area when you're stenciling. So what I'm doing is just a, I'm putting the brush down and giving it a wriggle on the wood behind it. If I did this too much, it would move these little bridges and it would get underneath them. So some people have actually commented on that I've seen, maybe in our Stencil of the Month Club, that they're having trouble with the trucks and those really fine lines. So this is what I would do, is just use this method. So I'm just putting the brush here and giving it a wriggle. I'm not swirling it around, I'm just wriggling the paint onto the stencil. Does that make sense? I hope that makes it a bit clearer and you know gives you a bit of a tip for doing those really um, tricky kind of fine areas. So that's all you need to do is just kind of Wow, we're nearly up to it, guys. We're 240. Woot woot. Nearly. All right. If we get to 240, we get a bonus winner today. So if you're watching, stay tuned. We are nearly finished and we will give some prizes out at the end. So you don't want to miss out on that. So this truck, remember, is from that vertical farmhouse sign called the sign set is welcome to our farmhouse. Let me just pop that lid back on. Someone just received their five new stencils that's amazing I love it and don't forget the stencil of the month club that's the set I used today and so it's got that extra little windmill and the little truck there so I couldn't fit the truck on here we put the windmill instead of the A if you've just joined me and then I've added this to another set which is the six pack farm life so if you want to get that use my code I restore stuff get you 10% off and it's very cute little farmhouse sign as well as our big burlap sign. So let me just pop that in here. Oh, wow, guys. Yes, 249. Can we do it? Can we do it? I just want to see. 250. Can we do 250 and get another prize winner? 250 watches um, gets you a bonus prize winner today, guys. Thank you so much for sprinkling the love and sharing this. We nearly got there. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we got to 249. Guys, here is the set that we made today, that one sign we made today. Farm, sweet farm. And I want to hold up my table runner. I'm going to take some pictures of this. Now, if you have not yet joined the Stencil of the Month Club um, for June, I designed the set for June and I'm so excited about the grandparent theme that is going on there. So if you haven't joined that, use my code IRESTOREStuff and you get 50% off your first month in the Stencil of the Month Club. So there's that. That's a lot of fun. So I can't wait to get that in the mail and I'll probably show you that on a live next week. Here is the, the table run. Oh, now you can't see it for the light behind me. If I hold it up like this, have we got it in the shot? <laughs> It's a bit tricky to show you, but that's why I kind of did it lengthwise today, but I'll show you that would look really nice. I'll set my um, runner on the table and send you a picture and you can see my antique grandparents, my grandparents antique table that I inherited on my blog at irestorestuff.com. If you look up the farmhouse table on there in the search bar, you'll be able to see that. So congratulations. Let's see if we've got some winners picked today. Um, essential stencil will be showing us the winners any second now so I can't wait to see who won we almost made it guys look 247 if we got up to 250 imagine if that happened right as we're finishing off the live I would hate to see someone miss out on a prize today just because of that 
but we're picking winners right now uh, for our stencils three lucky winners will get some stencil set and when you uh, when your name is tagged you'll see some instructions there of where to email to let them know your details let them know where to send the, where, where to send your prize um, but I can't wait to see who wins let's see I'm not sure if I can see the winners let me know if we've got winners on there guys because um, my comments are acting a little bit weird today <clears throat> but um, if you missed it earlier I'm Sharon from the blog I restore stuff and if you go over to my page my link is right there up in the description of the live I'd love you to go and follow me on my page on Facebook or Instagram I'm even on TikTok and Pinterest show you some fun tutorials on YouTube here are our winners today we've got Deborah Tracy and I have to click the see more button look essential stencil we must have done it um, we have got a fourth winner today guys congratulations Deborah Tracy Carol and Becky so we have got a bonus winner I'm so excited for that woo we did it guys and thank you so much for sharing the love and sprinkling our live around the Facebook land so I will see you again next week guys and thank you so much for watching I'll go back and have a read through some of the comments if you had questions that I missed I'm sorry I missed them I'll go back now and check them out so see you next week bye